Large-scale carbon capture schemes in the energy sector point to progress. But, as Nature Energy recently reported, further developments and support are still required to improve viability and to lead to widespread deployment. This year has so far seen the commencement of operations of two major carbon capture storage projects in the US energy sector. In January, the Petronova project in Texas started removing CO2 from the flue gas streams of a coal power generator, and in April, operations to capture carbon dioxide emissions from a corn ethanol processing plant began in Illinois. The Petronova project is a retrofit to an existing 240 megawatt coal-fired unit, making it the largest post-combustion capture project in the world. Capturing around 90% of the CO2 from the unit, that translated into an expected sequestration rate of around 1.4 million tonnes of CO2 per year. Whilst the Illinois project will store around 1 million tonnes annually and is the world's largest carbon capture and sequestration deployment at a bioethanol facility. These projects demonstrate that carbon capture from power plants and from the biofuels industry can work at scale and helps us to understand more about how to safely capture carbon and ensure it remains in its intended location. But it is sobering to put these amounts of CO2 sequestered into context alongside the suggested amounts required for significant progress towards meeting climate change targets. Modelling by the International Energy Agency has suggested that CCS could contribute to 14% of the cumulative emissions reduction required by 2060 in order to limit global temperature increases to 2 degrees centigrade. Running the numbers, this amounts to storing around 400 million tonnes of CO2 annually by 2025. Another matter to ponder is the fate of the captured CO2. At Petronova, the CO2 is piped into an oil field around 80 miles away where it's used to enhance oil recovery, which involves injecting streams of CO2 into the ground to eke out more oil from the West Ranch oil field. It is estimated that using this technique, production from the oil field will be boosted from around 300 to 15,000 barrels per day. Therefore, although the process has favourable effects on CO2 emissions from the power plant, the captured CO2 facilitates the production of more fossil fuels. Using captured CO2 to produce more fossil fuels may appear to be somewhat self-defeating in terms of trying to mitigate CO2 emissions through carbon capture and storage. However, given that capturing and storing CO2 represents a cost, it's natural that industry will seek routes to monetize the captured CO2 to increase the overall economic viability of such schemes. Therefore, to increase the chances that carbon capture schemes will be more widely deployed, regardless of what's done with the CO2, the economics will need to be improved and it's likely that targeted policy incentives to motivate further deployment of large CCS will be required. The experience gained by building and operating carbon capture storage facilities will also help to reduce costs in later iterations. For example, the people behind Sask Power's Boundary Dam Power Station in Canada, which started collecting CO2 from its coal-fired units in 2014, believe that similar future projects could be delivered around 30% reduced cost. As more ventures are undertaken, further reductions are therefore likely, calling for coordination to ensure that lessons learned from one project are applied to others. Beyond the capture phase of these processes, significant attention is also being paid to the conversion of CO2 into fuels and chemicals, such as polymers. Using captured carbon this way may have benefits in terms of emissions mitigation and could provide project schemes to improve the overall viability of carbon capture projects. Moreover, for regions with limited fossil fuel resources, Direct air capture of CO2 for use as a feedstock could have energy security benefits. Ultimately, whilst the economics of individual carbon capture technologies and projects will undoubtedly improve, capturing CO2 in order to bury it without further use will invariably involve an extra cost. Therefore, without governmental will and significant policy support such as adequate carbon pricing or limits on CO2 emissions, meaningful emissions mitigation through CCS at the scale required to meet the climate targets seems unlikely. Ultimately, as with most areas of the energy system, progress in several arenas, fundamental science, technology, engineering and support will have to be realised for serious headway to be made.